fantastic looking car, the Wild Ink Custom Race T Design entry of Chris Catchpole. Between you and Ray Eggins, Catchy, you can't miss the car. I like Ray's. Yeah. Ray's is a good car. Yeah. yeah. She's pretty right, isn't it? So your last name in itself is inspirational in a racing term because you always want to catch pole. That'd be nice. Yeah, it doesn't work out like that. Had you thought but, about uh, it that way before no, this? No, I haven't actually. No, no, I appreciate that. I used to get tadpole all the time. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. But uh, no, catchy's all right. That's uh, was you know dad's name and my brother's name, catchy. So yeah, it's pretty catchy, you know. So. There you go. Hopefully yeah. you will catch pole tonight for the New South Wales title. Tell me about Wild Inc. Wild Ink, mate. Um, they do um, all subliminated shirts, yes. all the T-shirts. They uh, major yep. sponsor for. Oh, you've Blue got the yeah, got your yeah. nice marquee there. They do all this, obviously. They all around and done the truck for me as well, yeah. so sensational. But uh, no, Dave, they um, they specialise in uh, sportswear. So all the um, active wear, they yep. actually do all the stuff, all the national volleyball teams, all the ladies, all the uniforms, that type of stuff. Wow. So all the speedway stuff is just a bit of a sideline for them. So. Yeah, cool. But they'll be doing all of our Australian title merchandise as well. So yeah, yeah up at Archie. So let's talk about a couple of events. We're here tonight for Lismore, of course, New South Wales title. We're here on Tuesday as well. Plus, coming up very soon is King of the Ring Definitely. up at Toowoomba. Yep. Plus, the Australian Championship and... Man, can you imagine winning the Australian title at the last ever running at Archfield Speedway? It's going to be great, isn't it? Yeah. It's yeah. a big season up here for you guys. It is. Yeah, it's exciting. Yeah. 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 How do you normally go at Lismore? I've only ran here twice, honestly. My first ever ringless race four years ago. And then I came back um, about a month ago, you know, in preparation yep. for this race. Mm -hmm. And I loved it. I loved it. I really good. So, yeah. Constantly left-handed. There's no way of uh, having a breather, is there? No, no. It's good fun, mate. Just hammer down all the way, right? So a little bull ring. So, yeah. How is Queensland wingless racing going? How are your numbers and how's competition? And Look it's good we've been growing all the time uh, we had a bit of a, um, uh, a influx with last year with North Queensland but now North Queensland's died off a bit so we're still sitting at about 60 60 cars in the state at the moment mm -hmm. which is still good I think we're we were at the AGM equal with um, Victoria yep and of course everyone wants to come to Queensland right because yep. COVID so you know we, we capitalize on that market but um, all in all it's good obviously Archer feels uh, you know finished up now you know at the end of June so um, that's going to be just mean it's going to be more dynamic for us and uh, moving around and traveling a bit more I think as a, as a series so uh, it's all positive we've got Gladstone coming online soon too as well so good yeah that's no, up and onwards and upwards good luck tonight mate thanks buddy Appreciate car it. looks very nice hope you catch bowl <laughs> better than catch cold exactly thank you Cool to catch up with Chris Catchpole. Let's get into heat number one now at Castrol Edge, Lismore Speedway. Huge crowd here in attendance. And Jacob Jolly already, the local hero, making his way around the top side in the number one car. The defending champion. Track is slick, but there's plenty of bite upstairs, which makes it multi-lane. So we work our way down the back. I'll use the word straight. It's not really what you would call it. Chris Catchpole under pressure as Jolly picks up the left front wheel working on David Eggins there in the 71 car. You've also got the 40 in there as well. James Grady Mark Blyton in the 5. Andrew Seary in the NX9 as we come back to the main straightaway and right at the moment it's Ian O'Toole doing a nice job in the NX20 Back to the main straightaway. Siri in that second position. Every time I say his name in commentary, my phone lights up and asks me what I want to know. Jolly working the top side. Can he make that stick? He's come from the back of the field. And look at this. Around the outside. Beautiful run. Jacob Jolly showing why he's the defending New South Wales and Queensland champion. And now into the race lead. Very nice job. Eggins. Trying to make his way forward as well. Doesn't Castrol Edge Lismore Speedway look fantastic? Blyton working the inside on the five just then. You've also got Butel in this battle. They work their way down into turn one and two. Beautiful venue. Incredible to think that it was ravaged by floods not that long ago. As we see Jolly on his way to victory lane the lismore nissan and kia number one related to the, the great paul o'neill who's a local legend 
in the Summerland area. It's a difficult track to get your head around if you've never run here before. You just see Eggins making a big charge. You've got O'Toole and Siri in that as well. There's no straightaway to speak of. The car is constantly in a left-hand arc. Siri put that left front up on the berm, we'll call it the lawn curb. Just watching the outside run here as well from the 20 car of Ian O'Toole. Can he make that stick on Siri? Eggins, great run for him into position number two. But what a drive from this guy, Jacob Jolly. Looking to wrap things up. Just has this track well and truly sorted. We really missed him at the Australian Championship at Murray Bridge when unfortunately the flooding then created havoc for him and he was unable to make the tour. But congratulations, Jacob Jolly. He'll get the win from Egan, Siri, O'Toole and Grady rounding out the top five in front of a big crowd at Castrol Edge Lismore Speedway. Boy, he just took the whip to it, didn't he? Right from the back, around to the race lead, and he got the job done. So there's your results. Jacob Jolly over David Eggins, Andrew Seary, Ian O'Toole, and James Grady rounding out the top five. This could be one of the prettiest looking wingless I've seen, Ego. Done a nice job, mate. Yeah. It's actually prettier than any of your modifieds, and you know, you used to have a bit of pride in those things, but I reckon this is better. Yeah, it should come out good. Um, when you've got an ugly head on you, you're gonna make the car look good. <laughs> I wasn't gonna say that. I do like the pipes, mate. I do like the, what color, you, what color, is that a gold or is it a copper or what color is oh, it? Oh, and it's actually turned gold since I just heated them up with old stainless steel. So mm. they've just turned that there. Everything you touch turns to gold, Ego. Oh, geez, I need to touch <laughs> some more things then. They, let's leave that alone. <laughs> so, Bar and Earth and Road are on board. Uh, good looking hot rod. How many years now in wingless sprints? Oh, this is the third season. And why wingless sprints? Oh, look, mods were great fun while I was there. Yep. But um, my budget just wasn't stretching far mm -hmm. enough, and these still fill the racing gap. They're still a race car, and, yep. and they race plentiful here in Lismore. Yeah. And um, and they're good. They're good little bang for your buck, really. So absolutely. So yeah, I, I enjoy. Um, so what advice would you give to people racing here for the first time? Because Lismore is a very unique circuit. If you're looking for a straightaway, you've come to the wrong place. Yeah. It's a complete left-hand situation. Yeah, it's a funny little joint because you're trying to find side bite and forward bite all in the same hit, which are two different sort of things you're trying to aim for. But it's just a place you've just got to be comfortable sort of looking sideways out the window, not forward out the window. And, um, yeah, it's a good place. I like I like the roundness of it and the flatness of it, actually, because you search for grip. Yeah. Good to see you, Ray. Yeah, no worries. Nice looking good hot good. ride, mate. Thanks, mate. Keep your eye out on the NX23 tonight. Getting set now for heat number two at the New South Wales Wingless Sprint Championship for 2023, and it is at Castrol Edge Lismore Speedway. A fantastic field of cars. Bailey Goodwin, as always, car looks immaculate, that N75. What a huge crowd we have here. So good to see such a big crowd. James Barton there in the Q91. You got Scott Fitzgerald, Scott Thompson, Blake Darcy, Braden Shute, Jacob Waller, Dylan Seely, Robert Mazza, and Andrew Sayer also in this one. Heat number two in front of a packed house. Here at Castrol Edge, Lismore Speedway, we come to the line and we get off a perfect start. Very neat little launch. Goodwin quickly into the race lead. Nice challenge coming here from Mazza. We're right on board. Cool shots from Robert Mazza here. Just watching Darcy getting into that as well. The CSR entry. Great shots off the back of the Robert Mazza number two. Big thanks to him for providing us with the onboard perspective. Sayer taking on Goodwin and doing a nice job of it. One of three of the Sayers in this family that have gone on to some really big things in speedway racing and the youngest of them is Andrew. What a battle we got going on here. Plenty going on. Thompson there, we just see Mazza in that Pottsville self-storage entry. And now the big challenge from the inside as well. What a great crowd we've got here. Fantastic way to showcase the New South Wales Wingless Sprint Championship for 2023. And you can see Jacob Waller making plenty of ground as well. Great shots off the back of Mazza. 
Wow, what a ripping shot. Check the palm trees in the background. You can see Thompson, Scotty Thompson, working the outside on Mazza. And you can see Blake Darcy in the N64 on the inside. So great shots over the back of the tail tank. And they're absolutely packed in here at Lismore, the Summerland region. Oh, we got problems here. And it looks like a red flag situation. Back at the restart. Goodwin away handily. Sayer right there with him along with Mazza. Blake Darcy figuring in this one as well. There is Mazza to the right who's carrying out onboard pictures as they work their way off turn number four. The nitro car of Sealy. Really sweet looking hot rod. Car really stands out, doesn't it? Mazza puts the move on the inside of Saya. Darcy goes around and oh no! Nowhere left to go is Scott Fitzgerald who plows into the side of the CSR fabrication entry of Blake Darcy. Second restart of this race. Bailey Goodwin to lead away. Spent a bit of time in legend car racing. Has very much found his feet in the wingless sprint side of things. Andrew Sayer in second. You can just see now that red entry of Jacob Waller starting to make some progress as well. Back to the main straight. There is that Nitro V87 of Dylan Seeley. He's actually been camping here at the grounds just to try and keep the overheads down. He raced down at the big tour down in Victoria. Nice job. He'll get the win. Bailey, good one. Nice effort from Andrew Sayer in second. Mazza was lively. Seeley got up to fourth. Waller was strong in his run for fifth. So it's Bailey Goodwin, your winner. From Andrew Sayer, Robert Mazza, Dylan Seeley, and Jacob Waller rounding out your top five. Another sweet looking hot rod, the Pottsville Self Storage. Tony Powell Speedway Photos, Caravan City Sales, number two of Robert Mazza. Maz, you're a Brisbane boy, but Pottsville, I've got to say, Pottsville is a pretty nice part of the world. It's a beautiful part of the world, mate, absolutely. Look at that for a background for the pits, mate, here at Lismore. Gorgeous place. How is Queensland racing going at the moment? Yeah, it's been good. Uh, the club up there is really growing and a lot, of, lot more people coming in and, and they're really close racing, yeah. You've been around this category a long time now, over 10 years. Yeah, yeah. Started, I think, 2011, I think it was, we first started. Why? Remember? Um, car owner Tony, he's been around Speedway. I've known him since I was a teenager and um, Mick Santin got this class up and running up here and uh, he just said, oh, I'm looking at buying a car. Would you be interested in driving it? And just been going from there. Yeah. Just started out having a bit of fun. Car looks mint. Very nicely uh, turned out. Thank standard you. of competition in this pits as well as the standard of presentation is very good. Yeah, that's uh, the class has come a long way from when we first got in it with presentation wise. No matter where you go around the country now, the cars look a treat. So it's really good. So budget wise, this sort of fit where you're at with what you do and you know, geography and you know, the amount of cars you race against. What's the appeal of this class? Just the competitive the competitiveness of it all, mate. No matter where you go. Um, you can be competitive everywhere, you know, like um, obviously the level of presentation, the equipment in the cars has got a lot better, but um, yeah, that's the main appeal, just being competitive wherever you go and running side by side with the guys, not just running around doing hot laps on your own pretty much. What's your expectation for the New South Wales titles, mate? To win it. Whew, I like that. Time now for heat number three, and it's a little chaotic early as we get into the action. And it wasn't exactly the start that everybody was hoping for. Pete Granger on the outside with Graham Flood. Big crowd here. Just loving the fact we've got such an excellent crowd at Castro Edge, Lismore Speedway. And it's heat number three. The New South Wales Wingless Sprint Championship here in Lismore. The home of the Summerland V8 Dirt Modifieds for such a long time. Great crowd in the house. You can see Flood on the inside. And Brody Thompson getting a good run in the 18 car. So it's slick on the bottom. But there's enough to lean on upstairs. You can just see Granger and Thompson into that 1-2 position right there. And boy... Doesn't the Ray Eggins car stand out like something else? The NX23, we just spoke with a little earlier, Ray 
formerly a V8 Dirt Modified racer. I've known him for a lot of years in this region. A real character. Beautifully turned out hot rod. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, Troy Little in the number 20 car. Who worked their way out of turn number four. And the NX76 of Tony Watkins. There's your leader. It's Goulburn's Bro uh, Pete Granger. He's got Brody Thompson breathing down his neck at the moment as we now see Eggins making the attempted pass on the outside of Flood. Graham Flood. Here is the challenge, though, for the race lead down the back straight, in inverted commas. They go by that beautiful big grandstand in turn three and four, the Northern Star Grandstand. Thompson! New race leader in the Q18 goes by Pete Granger in the N63. Mason Cattell looking pretty racy as well in the NX34. And we just see the NX33 of Errol Campbell getting on the gas as well. Race being officialed by Scott Yallop, president of the AWSR, and also his accomplice in this case, Brett Morris. Oh, look at Little. The pit stop autos, number 20, the Steve Lynch entry. Trying that outside groove to get up into the top five if you can. Boy, you can really see the Ray Eggins car. Making big ground now on Granger. Off turn number four, Brody Thompson wraps it up. Oh, just Granger over Eggins. Cattell got up to fourth. And Graham Flood rounding out the top five. Great finish there between Pete Granger and Ray Eggins. And that is how heat number three looked. Brody Thompson, your winner from Pete Granger, Ray Eggins, Mason Cattell, and Graham Flood rounding out your top five. I gotta say, there's some sweet looking hot rods, Matty Nikoforov and a bit of one six industries action. As well, Carl looks mint as always. You must be excited about the New South Wales title. Yeah, mate, can you get after it? Let's well, see how we go. We um, run up here last weekend for the 50 lap after right. we uh, got told we couldn't go to SummerSlam, so we come up here and made the nine hour track up here and had a run and started out of four, so it wasn't too bad. We fell back a bit in the feature. We kind of went the wrong way to set up, but other than that, we were all right. So, what's different? I mean, spectator wise, it's very different. It's constantly left hand corner. What's it like as a driver? Um, oh, well, yeah, especially here compared to AC Creek, you're turning left a lot here, so um, it loads up a lot on the right rear. Um, but other than that, like obviously the track blew off after 50 laps, so yeah. we were pretty free by the end of it. Um, probably went the wrong way. Um, me and Dad, we had a bit of a debrief once we got back, and after we had a rollover, we kind of come back and we went, yeah, that's we probably went the wrong way we set up. So, but that's right. We'll tune up this weekend and see how we go. Good field too. The New South Wales title always attracts. A very good lineup of cars. So, what do you think the key is tonight? At least you've got some laps up your sleeve yeah, here. Yeah, 100%. Just going to get through the heats. Um, so, as high, start as high as you can. And from the future, see what you can do. do as long as you lock in, see, see what you can do. How many races have you had this season, mate? Uh, this is, well, I don't even know. It's probably uh, 15th show. We, we hit the first wow. one at Avalon. And we've just, every race that we could hit, we've been running. Um, so, we were going to run through at SummerSlam, but we got told we couldn't. So. Yep. Um, but I know we've just been trying to go racing as much as possible. We've done every club show that New South Wales has had on. And so it's time for heat number four, the first heat of the second bracket. And Mark Blyton will start on your pole. The veteran racer out of Dubbo, G. Goodwin, and also Darcy, very racy early catch pole. Back in that one as well. You can see Saya getting involved. Three wide out of turn number four. Mark Blyton doing a good job out in front. The Dino Flow exhaust number five. But G. Bailey Goodwin really coming after him at the moment. You're just watching catch pole. Oh, Goodwin ran very wide out of turn number four. Then now he cuts back across the extreme low side. And the Aussie Racing entry of Andrew Sayer making his way forward. The young teenager doing one heck of a job. So you can just see now Goodwin coming back on the outside chasing Sayer as they head down into turn number three. Mark Blyton. Boy, he's got some experience, this guy. Even a very big crash recently hasn't slowed him down, lives and breathes for the sport, and of course has three kids that are exceptionally good behind the wheel as well. Right at the moment, Andrew Sayer. You can just see Blake Darcy on screen in the number 64 car. There's Eggins 
in the 71. That's David Eggins. You've also got James Grady in the Q40 and Chris Catchpole in the Q73. Blyton very much in control. Sayer in that second spot. Goodwin, who was challenging for the lead earlier, ran a bit wide out of turn number four and it cost himself a stack of ground. There is Sayer, straight out of the Speedway karting ranks like both of his older brothers who moved into wingless and then into 410 sprint car racing as well. Look at this crowd. Beautiful summer's evening here at Castrol Edge, Lismore Speedway. Mick and Kim Sauer have been doing such a good job with really getting this venue back up to scratch after some horrific flood damage. Goodwin closing right in on Sayer now. That's actually the bitumen go-kart tra uh, go track over the back of the pit area just there as well. It's a great little motorsport precinct. The city of Lismore itself trying to get back on its feet after what has been a very difficult time for the city. We work our way down the back straightaway. Again, I use that term loosely. It's all Mark Blyton in the number five car. Andrew Sayer in second. Bailey Goodwin third. Fitzgerald very strong in that fourth spot. And Blake Darcy Heat number four, that's your top five. Second last heat race of the New South Wales wingless sprint title for 2023 at Castrol Edge, Lismore Speedway. It's heat five, and boy, it is busy up the front. Fastest cars to the back, or a complete reversal of their front row starting order from their first group of heat races. And you can see... Eggins right in the middle of this. You got Braden Shoot in here. Robert Mazza, Scott Thompson. Boy, it's a busy field. Matty Nikiforov as well. Restart situation. Oh, wow. This is what happened further back. Jeez, that got fierce. That was Campbell into the back of Mazza. Really appreciate Rob Mazza carrying our onboard cameras, or we are utilizing his. And you can see. That's actually Waller, I think we just saw just then. So we're good to go. Back underway. Jacob Waller in the 36. You can see Thompson there. You can also see the 34 of Mason Cattell. So back to a single file restart. We get underway. And right now, Jacob Waller doing a neat job. Under a lot of pressure now. We work our way on the back stretch. Keep using the term straight because and stretch because that's what you have at most speedways. But at Castrol Edge, Lismore Speedway, that's not actually the case. The way these guys go racing, it's a complete circle. Waller under a lot of pressure here now from shoot. The Hobbs trenching services entry. This kid has got some talent. In fact, both of them, only newcomers to the sport, but gee, they're very good, these youngsters. Scott Thompson in that fourth spot, Eggins. Weighing in on the inside. Mazza coming on as well. Look at the outside run from Braden. Shoot. Boy, that was one heck of a run on the It didn't quite come off for him. You can just see that the moment that Waller still has that lead position. Eggins now fires up on the inside. Shoot goes back to the top. Nikiforov just there as well. You've got Thompson. Whoa, this is the best heat race of the night so far. Wow, shoot has absolutely fired away into the race lead. We go back on board right now with Robert Mazza. You can see how tight these cars are. They try to hang on to that completely left-hand corner situation. You never really get to straighten the car up too much. Mazza right in the middle of this. Thompson too, firing. Nikiforov, Eggins on the bottom. This kid, Braden, shoot, wow. He's older sister is a pretty handy racer as well. It's a real family operation for the shoots. A lot of pressure right now. Thompson having a crack at Waller and will get him. So nice run there. Eggins too. In fact, Waller came back on the top groove. Good to see there's an outside groove to work with here. Matt Nikiforov, he's working in the middle of all that as well, trying to get forward. But look at the lead. For Braden, shoot, he takes a substantial win. Mazza was solid in that second place. Unfortunately, Campbell had some issues. So too did Troy uh, Watkins, I should say, Tony Watkins. But there's your winner.
Wow, big crowd here at Lismore. Really enjoying that. Shoot your winner from Mazza, Thompson, Waller, and Matty Nikiforov ends up in the top five. Sixth and final heat race of the 2023 New South Wales wingless sprint title from Castro Edge, Lismore Speedway. And this will no doubt be an absolute ripper. You got Jolly in there as well. Brody Thompson, Thomas McDonald, Troy Little, already Jacob Jolly making a big impression, but for all the wrong reasons. He and Troy Little get hooked up together in front of this very big turn one and two crowd. Gee, they've done a nice job of this venue. The Sours have really dressed it up beautifully, haven't they? Their lawns are manicured, the venue looks really tidy, and... They've taken a lot of pride in the facility. Hard to believe it's not that long ago that this venue was absolutely underwater. And I mean, like, several feet up to the second tier of the commentary box building. Kind of where this camera stand is, is where the water came up to at one point not so long ago. So the Lismore City is trying to regroup and trying to rediscover its love for live events after... Some horrific flooding and the damage that has really torn at the fabric of this place. But Lismore's a tough place full of tough people. And the crowds have been phenomenal at Lismore Speedway this year. So really good to see some positive situations coming from what has been a difficult time. We're going to get back underway now. You've got Thompson, McDonald, Butel, Siri, Jolly, Granger, Little, Flood, Lee and O'Toole in this Neat little battle. Jolly immediately back to the outside. You see Brandon Lee there in the N44. That's Troy Little on screen in the Steve Lynch-owned pit stop autos. Number 20, Jolly trying to come back and flood. Ironic, Billy. We should have a driver named Flood in Lismore. And you can see the current New South Wales. And Queensland, number one, fires through beautifully on Flood just then. And he heads out after this leader, Brody Thompson, Thomas McDonald, Joel Butel, Andrew Seary. And there is Pete Granger on screen as well out of Goulburn. Butel in the beautifully turned out N22, very much like the old fighter bomber style. You see Seary bombing one in on his own, trying that lower groove into turn one and two. Look at that big grandstand in the background. Reminds me very much of an Indiana fairground. Gee, Brody Thompson has them absolutely covered. Nice job. McDonald in that second spot. Jolly closing in on Andrew Seary in the NX9. Look at that. Jolly got the Lismore Nissan and Kia number one with the left front way off the ground. Granger leading this little trio. Watching Jolly to the top once more. Here he comes again on the nine car. Can he make it stick? Granger's already out there. That kind of affected the run that Jolly had going on the top. Granger again trying for it, but look at the lead. The Q18 of Brody Thompson has over the rest of the field here at the Lismore Showground, a.k.a. the Castrol Edge Lismore Speedway. Hope you're enjoying the coverage of the New South Wales Wingless Sprint Championship. Of course, the big Aussie title coming up at Archerfield Speedway later this season. So it's been a very good battle right now for the minor positions because nobody has been able to get New Year, your race leader. Thomas McDonald doing a good job in the V20. Incredible. Every time I say Siri's name, my phone lights up and wants to answer a question. There is Granger battling with Jolly. In fact, keeping him within gun sight. But Brody Thompson will get the win substantially over Thomas McDonald, Joel Butel, Andrew Siri, and Jacob Jolly got back to the top five. Time for your last chance qualifier right now. Your B main here at Castrol Edge, Lismore Speedway. The venue for the 2023 New South Wales Wingless Sprint Championship. And wow, Blake Darcy already opening up a pretty handy lead as we come out of turn number four for the first time. A couple of guys in this that really don't want to be in this one. Troy Little is a good example of that. Darcy has them well and truly covered from Flood in that second spot. Nikiforov battling in there as well. Big field 
here for this New South Wales Wingless Sprint Championship. We come out of turn number four. Nice shots. Michael Geddes outside the fence to get this down low speed shot. You just see catch pole there as well as we work our way out of turn number four. So the B main, you're going to have to get it done early if you're going to get a chance to head into the championship A, just like Blake Darcy is doing right now. Track has been slick on the bottom throughout the course of the night, but there's still been a bit of a ledge to lean on. It hasn't been a big cushion, but there's been drive out there. A bit of grip has certainly helped. Darcy, who spun in his earlier heat race, has that CSR number 64 car well and truly honking right now. He's got a nice little lead. Dylan Seeley's in this field, as well as Scott Fitzgerald, Chris Catchpole, Errol Campbell. He got caught up in an incident earlier, so too did Tony Watkins. You got Brandon Lee, Jaden O'Toole. So there's a bunch of guys in this. That, oh my goodness, big problem here. A lot of smoke and fire as well. So this has been a very unsavory situation for Matt Nikiforov, who jumps immediately out of the car. Gee, the crash crew did a good job. They were very quickly onto the scene just then. And Matty taking the gloves off and putting him inside the car. That crash crew, apart from being decked out in some pretty swish-looking gear, they were right onto the job. And this brings under caution our B main, our last chance qualifier. We get back underway. That's Graham Flood to the left of your screen. Working the top is Sealy, I think. Let's see whether he can get the job done. You can see that slick groove down low. There is Sealy in that nitro car, which really does stand out. That's Thompson coming after Flood. So Scott Thompson in that uh, third position because this is your leader. Blake Darcy well and truly has them covered. Troy Little buying in, trying to squeeze by on Thompson. You got Seeley in there, Scotty Fitzgerald. This is a battle royal going on to see who goes through and picks up the final four seats in the A main for tonight. Seeley there switching across the slick and Trying to pick up some traction coming out of turn number two. Must be a very difficult track to drive. You never really get a chance to let up. Blake Darcy has them well and truly covered at the moment. As of course, experience in racing sprint cars as well as wingless. Flood just there with Little, with Thompson and now Sealy. So a neat little battle pack emerging between these guys. Little, the speculator on Graham Flood, who's also one of the tech inspectors in the New South Wales Wingless Sprint Association. Gee, nice run from Thompson. Did he get around the outside? They are bunched up here, trying to get by Floody. Little trying to work the inside. Thompson to the outside, and Sealy trying to work with whatever is left at this point. All car hitting infield just then. Might be O'Toole. Anyway, our race leader, Blake Darcy, he's got him covered, but this is a ripping battle for second here. Just wow. There is Catchpole, the Queensland uh, wingless sprint president. Flood has all sorts of pressure. Thompson, wow. Beautiful run from Scott Thompson. He actually got two of them then. He got Flood and Little. Now Little and Sealy both got by Flood. So poor old Floody, he went into the corner in second. And he came out four spots further behind. So that was a quick look back at what just happened. Checkered flag has come out. Blake Darcy will get the win. A dominant performance from him here at Castrol Edge, Lismore Speedway. Scott Thompson second, Troy Little third, Dylan Sealy fourth, and Graham Flood. Gee, he ended up back in fifth. What a race that was. So it's all come down to this. It's the 2023 New South Wales Wingless Sprint Championship in front of a huge crowd here at Castrol Edge, Lismore Speedway. The fans have really turned out, and you can see they've all got their phone lights lit up as the drivers form up for the four-wide formation to send back the love. So it's been a really good title so far. Track has been neutral playing field for a lot of these teams as everybody tries to get their head around that constant left-hand turn situation 
Once again, we ride on board with Robert Mazza. Big thanks to him for providing us these cool onboard shots off the tail tank of the number two car. You can see Jacob Jolly just to the right-hand side off the back of there. Big field of cars. Jolly, the defending champ, looks to put that number one on the line. And, of course, with the Australian Championship coming up later in the season at Archerfield Speedway, he'll be desperate to see if he can secure an Australian Championship win up at Archie as well. We're green. Lots going on here. We work our way out of turn number four. Say out right in the middle of this. So, too, is Goodwin. You can already see... A ch oh man, big trouble just here. Is that, I think it's Eggers caught up in the middle of all this right now. So Ego, unfortunately, oh, there's a couple of cars taken out of this already. So dramas before we even get really started here in the A main. So after that initial drama on the line, we get set to go once more. Gee, look at the brakes jammed on or glowing with sparks coming off the Jacob Jolly left front. That really had the front of the car lit up. We come out of turn number four and we get underway. In fact, that's the back stretch into turn number three. Now we're out of four. Goodwin making his bold charge. You can see Dave Eggins in the middle of all this as well. So Goodwin at the moment. You've got Sayer right in the middle of all this as well. You've got Thompson. You've got Jolly. Wow. Who is going to get this one is anyone's guess. There's so many good cars. And you would have to think lap traffic is going to play a part in this at some point. Sayer running that low side. We go on board with Mazza. That is shoot in behind. Very talented youngster. Already had a heat race win tonight. Right up close in that number 59. So he is going to be a factor in this at some point, you would have to think. Jolly taking on Sayer now. What can he do? That's the battle for second because right now Goodwin has managed to get away from them. You're watching the A-Main, the championship race of the New South Wales Wingless Sprint Championship from Castrol Edge at Lismore Speedway. And it's all Bailey Goodwin doing the job. Jolly trying to get by Sayer. And everybody hugging the bottom. You have to be fairly adventurous to work the top and then hope you can make it stick. Though having said that, in all the heat races, there's been outside passing galore. So it is certainly possible. But you have to think maybe now the lower side of the racetrack might be taking a bit of rubber. Everybody clinging to that low side. We see the cars from the back stretch shot over onto the main straight. This is turn one and two. There's Goodwin as we now see Jolly closing in. Then back to Sayer. Here is the MSP shop fittings. KRGS entry. Goodwin ran very wide there. Got to be careful. He doesn't open up the door a little bit more than that because he's certainly got an absolute hot shoe on his tail. Brody Thompson has been super fast all weekend. So too has Jacob Waller, relative new to the sport. He's been doing a hell of a job. Thomas McDonald also running up the pointy end of the field. Andrew Seary, Troy Little, Scott Thompson, Blake Darcy has come out of the B main. Substantial win for Blake there. You can see Jacob Jolly now. The Lismore lead foot really starting to gain some ground on Goodwin. In fact, here's the lead. Gee, Bailey ran a bit wide. And Jacob was there to capitalize, put the Lismore, Nissan and Kia, number one, right into that first spot. And now look how cagey he is, putting the car right back on that lower groove, making sure that he doesn't drift up track a little bit like Bailey did before. Now, Bailey will try and come back, and he'll also know there's not much upstairs. I'm not saying that's a judgment call on anyone's brain matter it's more about the fact that there's not much really off that slick groove to work with you just see Sayer under a lot of pressure just there oh good one he's closing in they're going to come up on lap cars here soon and that's going to be really where a lot of the interest is on this they're closing up top five really 
nothing between them at this point. Goodwin again asking the question of the race leader. Looking back a little bit further in the order here, there is Little and Darcy, those guys coming out of the B main, but that's where the lap traffic is that we're about to encounter. Jolly's opened up a bit of ground now. Sayer, the, the youngest of the three Sayer boys, his dad Jeremy, was a pretty handy HQ racer back in the day. Mum Stacy is, I think, the heart and soul of the team, however. As we see this battle playing out, these guys have no idea that very shortly the leaders are about to close in on them. You can just see now that, wow, shoot, has now closed right in there as well behind Waller. Jacob Waller, shoot runs a little wide. You've got Thompson, you've got Sealy, you've got Blake Darcy, you've got James Grady in there, Mark Blyton, of course, as well as Graham Flood. Become your leaders once more. Lismore Speedway packed to the rafters tonight in conjunction with the New South Wales Wingless Sprint Championship is the New South Wales Late Model Championship. And that has been extremely entertaining as well. Back to the front stretch or back to the flag stand is probably an easier way to put that. There is Jacob Waller and he has got Shoot, Braden Shoot right in behind him. Thomas McDonald in amongst all of this along with Andrew Seary, Troy Little, Dylan Seely, James Grady, Mark Blyton, Mazza, who's been carrying our onboard cameras. We've seen Thompson right in behind once more. Brody Thompson. Jolly getting away just a little bit, but look at the, the uh, lap cars just ahead. So Goodwin would know this. He'll know that he's got to keep the low line protected because he's surely going to have someone visiting behind there very shortly. Again, he runs a little bit wide. I wonder whether his tyre might be a bit worn out just then. Goodwin ran wide. Brody Thompson got through. So good job from Brody. He's been exceptionally quick all night. They're coming up now on Butel. He's got a flat left rear tyre. If you look closely on the 22, I think the left rear is very flat. And Goodwin gets into the side of him. So those issues continue. That allows Sayer to move up into the top three. And now Brody Thompson trying it on with Jacob Jolly. Boy, you've got to hang on to that infield lawn, don't you? And not let go because if you drift up track a little too far, you're going to be completely exposed. Gee, Brody's got some speed all over the back of Jolly. They haven't really caught the lap traffic like I thought they would at this point. And now you can see Brody Thompson making some real ground up. They're going to put a lap on Graham Flood. Jolly manages to squeeze by, but cautions come out. Now that's a very pivotal moment for the race leaders. We've got a car in trouble out of turn number four. This is a pivotal restart. They were just starting to encounter traffic. And then the yellows came on. We jump on board with Mazza. He's got Jacob Waller right in behind him in that 36 car. Maz is giving us some tremendous onboard pictures. We say a big thank you to him for his coverage. There is Darcy. Man, a long line of cars, isn't there? Got to be really careful not to step out of line. Thomas McDonald has been up and about tonight in the V20. Watching now as shoot goes by. I think it might even have been McDonald or was it Siri? They work our way back towards the flag. This is the back stretch area. You can see the giant video screen in the background in turn one and two. There it is, Sayer. It's inevitable you would think he'll end up in a sprint car at some point. All three of the Sayer boys started their lives in Speedway go-karts and have moved their way through to wingless and then on to sprint cars. It's been a, a really clever little traditional evolution for them when you go from speedway carts into open wheel competition in some form the wingless really makes sense to then take you on to the 410 sprint cars at eastern creek speedway and venues like that the wide open clothing aussie racing entry of sayer will end up finishing third but jolly will wrap up the a main and successfully defend his new south wales title from a very very quick brody thompson Sayer is third. You go back to Waller in fourth. Then shoot, rounding out the top five. Mazza, McDonald, Siri, Little, 
and Scott Thompson, your top 10. So there he is, successfully defending his NSW number one. He'll want to do the same thing with his Queensland number one. Jolly, in front of the hometown fans, wraps up a very good night at the office to successfully defend his number one. What's he going to do at Archerfield for the Australian Championship? That's going to be the big question as he heads towards the scales to lock in officially the win in the Lismore Nissan and Kia number one.